Hello, beautiful people. How are you doing? Hope you guys are doing okay. So, this video I'll be sharing with you guys the few things I've picked up while living here in the United Kingdom. Okay, you know, coming from Africa, the life as in lifestyle here is totally different. The culture here is different. Everything is so different from what we have in Nigeria or in Africa. Okay, so I've actually picked some of these behaviors or some of these um things while living here some of them are good yeah <laughs> and it's weird and some of them are like a shock for me okay so in this video i'll be revealing all these things to you all okay so if this kind of content sounds like something you're interested in then you definitely want to keep watching all right so you guys the number one shock when we recently moved in here is you pay for bags like when you go to the stores to buy stuff you bring it's either you bring your own bag or you pay for bag and it's strange it's weird like in nigeria you go to buy stuff out there shopping mall anywhere at all ha. now the shopping mall will give you bag now do you understand like i came to buy your product i came to buy your goods and after buying stuff you expect me to still buy bag nylon to pack my own bongo <laughs> It was very, very strange for me, okay? And you guys, I kept doing this for about two, three weeks after we got here. Like, when I go, I buy stuff, I come back. When I'm going out again, I'll forget my bag in the house and still go <laughs> without my bag. And I'm getting there, I'll end up buying another bag. It happens a number of times before I got used to it, okay? But now, <laughs> I cannot do that mistake. Even if I'm going to buy one gallon of milk, I'm going with a bag. <laughs> you can't be wasting extra 20 pence every time, okay? So that was a shocker for me. Paying for your bag. It doesn't happen in Nigeria, okay? Instead, big shops, like, they'll give you fancy bag to put the stuff you got from them, all right? But here, it's not the case here. So, you guys, this one is like a habit that I've picked up. And that is the amount of greeting here, okay? You know, when somebody tells you, you right. You'd be like, you don't even need to respond. Or you can just smile, you know, or, or hi. You're right. That is, are you all right? That is, if you're saying it in the Nigerian way. Okay, that is, are you all right? But they will be like, the locals here will be like, you're right. You all right. <laughs> so when we initially got here, it was difficult for me to understand that because I, when you go to work, they'll be like, you're right. You're right. And that, Am I, did, I don't know, did I enjoy myself or what? Because everybody keep asking me, you're right, you're right. So I'll be like, did I hurt myself? Why are these people asking me if I'm okay, if I'm okay? But then I didn't know that it's their own way of saying hello or their own way of saying hi. Do you understand? But now I've gotten used to it, okay? So even myself, on getting to work, you know, meeting somebody I know on the road, I'll be like, you're right, because hey, we are trying to be blending into the society, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, that is it. The next one is, I find that very weird. Like, really, really weird, okay? The locals here, people here prefer to chat you up or send you a message or call you by WhatsApp instead of calling you, calling you normal calls. Like, in Nigeria, it's very easy for somebody to, like, pick up their phone, call you straight up. For example, here... Calling via normal call is is not it is not common here. It's not common here at all. It's not common here. They will prefer to call you on WhatsApp. Okay, and I find that very very strange. Why will I call you on WhatsApp when I when I can call you straight up on direct? Phone? Either way, though, communication is communication. But I find that very weird. Like, so another thing I find very weird here, you guys, they like walking their pets. Like every morning, like it's a routine to some of these people. Like it's a daily routine. They walk their pets in the mornings. They walk their pets in the evening. I'll be like, pet, as in pet, and get that pussy cat. They will not come and be walking, you know. God, that was that is weird. Away from Nigeria, who walks dog? Like, yeah, people who have, who have dog, like, you know, once in a while, you see people who have dog, like, walk their dog come back but here yeah, it's like a routine it's like a routine you be walking on the road see people with their dog wururum, wururum, hanagar. i be like what is all this the other day i saw somebody who has a pet inside a stroller you know baby stroller i'm like hi god 
What is this? Nketa inside stool. Stool that people used to carry picking. Okay, I don't know. It's all right. <laughs> so I find that so, so strange. All right. So another thing I find like weird here when we initially came, although this is a habit now because it's a habit that I've already picked up and that is obsession with tea or coffee. Okay. Here, yeah, people are obsessed with tea and coffee. Like when you go to work, people will come to work in the morning. The first thing they do is make a coffee or a tea for themselves. You know, tea in Nigeria is, you know, we take our tea or beverage, we take it with bread and have it as a breakfast, then cup. But here, mm -mm. it's not like that. Here, yeah, tea is like, um, when I say tea and coffee is like, yeje moji. You give it that, I don't know when you have a visitor, you can just, hello, would you like a cup of tea? You no, know, that kind of a thing. Like, you guys, I'm beginning to learn that because sometimes in the morning, when going to work, I will just fill my water bottle with coffee and yeah baby girl is not drinking coffee <laughs> that's another thing i've picked up from here before i came here i'm not a coffee person Chakam. but now i take coffee yeah that's another habit i've picked up while living here okay yes so another thing that i've learned since we moved here you guys is appreciating the sun <laughs> you know in Africa, not just let me say in Nigeria, when the sun is city, be like, hey, I won't catch neck and that big like you know, the sun should just have mercy on us. Do you understand? But here, when the sun comes out, you appreciate it. Like I've learned to appreciate the sun. Like when you go outside, especially on a very sunny sunny day, you see you see people sitting down and they just came out just to enjoy the sun. Okay. And let me just tell you, there was a day I was going to walk. And I was on the bus and suddenly my body system like changed. I was like, what is this? What is this? You know, initially I didn't like think it was anything. But when I started knowing that um, was, I was inside me. I know that I was feeling down. I was feeling so down. I didn't know. I actually wanted to call in because I was already on, I was already on my way to work. But I, I wanted to make a phone call. To call in sick i said could this be covid but of course covid they always show now they get so true and all of those but so i didn't know what's happening i didn't know that you guys i was lacking vitamin d how did i get to know that so when one of the passengers just dropped off i changed my seat and sat close to the window and the sun the ray of the sun was coming directly from that angle immediately i felt the sun on my skin you guys i felt like Something happened in, inside me. I felt a change. I felt a little bit better. I was like, eh? Is it because I'm lacking vitamin D? So that was how I now moved closer and removed my jacket, everything. And the sun was hammering me. And I was feeling a lot better. That's when I knew, ee -wee. So it was shocking to me because this has never happened to me in Nigeria because our sun in Nigeria is one. <laughs> it's one is one. When you hammer you, your skin self go understand. So here yeah, I've come to appreciate the sun. A little bit sun. I like to go outside, you know, just to enjoy the sun. Okay. The thing I've come to like pick up here is sweater and jumper. So one day I went to the store to buy something and and the lady that was attending to me was like, I love your jumper. I was like, can't go quite jumper because I'm not wearing any jumper. I looked that I was wearing a jean. <laughs> I was wearing a jean and Within me, I was like, I want to go jumper. I said, I just sent you. I said, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love the color. I said, ah. I said, thank you. And I was like, okay, thank you. Thank you. You know. So later I realized that you, they call it jumper. I went, yeah. I told myself, thank God I didn't even ask that lady which jumper. Because she'd be like, are you all right? You're putting on a jumper. You're asking me which jumper. So yeah. Our weddings are different. Like some words we use in Nigeria. Is actually different from the words they use here in describing some things okay so that is it all right so this one is a shocker for me you guys is is a shocker and also weird for me and that is 50 pounds you can never see 50 pounds in circulation you know like we have 1000 naira in nigeria which is our highest currency yeah the highest currency is is 50 pounds but 
you can never see 50 pounds in circulation. I don't know why. I don't know why. You will go to the ATM to withdraw money. They will give you 20, 20 pounds or 10, 10 pounds. Do you understand? You go to the bank, the same thing. So my question is, why isn't the 50 pounds in circulation? I be, is it for certain, you know, for the bourgeois, for the upper class people? <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen the fifty. The only time I've seen fifty pound is the one we came with from Nigeria, and which was even their old notes. Apart from that, you can never go to the market store anything and you see fifty pounds. Like mm -mm. it doesn't happen. But I will find out. I don't know the reason why. Please, if you know, let us know in the comment section why fifty pounds is not in circulation here in the United Kingdom. Okay, the highest currency you can see, you know, in people's hands is twenty pounds. I don't know the reason why did they hold their 50 pounds. I don't know. Another thing that I find weird here in the UK, they call lunch dinner. Like when you go to work, I'll be like, oh, it's time for dinner, it's time for dinner. Meanwhile, that's past 12. And you'll be wondering, if these guys are the people that taught us English. So why are they calling lunch dinner? I don't understand. In fact, I don't know the reason why. I honestly don't know the reason why. Even in the key school, lunch are called dinner. You, at the workplace, lunch after dinner. The reason why they do that, I don't know. So I still find that very, very weird. So you guys, this one is actually funny, okay? And that is saying sorry. You know, in Nigeria, before people would talk to you, I'm sorry. When you hurt yourself, they will tell you sorry. But here, when somebody hurts themselves and you be like, oh, sorry. And we're like, why are you saying sorry? It's not your fault. <laughs> so I was at work one day and one of my colleagues accidentally, you know, caught herself and I told her, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. You know, while she was bleeding, like a lot of blood was coming out. While I was helping her, you know, tie the band just to seal out the blood. And while I was helping her roll that thing, I was like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> And she was like, stop saying sorry. Stop saying sorry. It's not your fault. I was like, why can't I tell you sorry? You hurt yourself. And this is me showing that I care. This is me showing you concern. And she was like, oh, is that what you mean? I said, yes, that is what I meant by sorry. I'm not telling you sorry because of one that cost it. Well, the next word is betting shops. You know, in Nigeria, every corner is a betting shop. Every corner is a That's the same thing that happens here. There are a lot of betting shops like all oh, this. I'm um, betting Nigeria, yeah, betting this one and that is is here as well. I said when I saw it, I said, "Did they give me these people? They give me <laughs> they give <get> betting Nigeria." <laughs> and I just realized that oh, this is football people. This is football people. So there are lots of betting shops here as well, just like we have in Nigeria. With the next thing that i have picked up this one is a bad manner honestly <laughs> that i've picked up since i moved in the uk is eating on the road <laughs> i'm even shy saying it you guys eating on the road here is like it's, it's no big deal it's no big deal like you can buy your food from any vendor and you know be eating it on the road while you are working it's no big deal here okay the big guy has picked up the habits which i'm not proud of anyway but a lot of lookers do it here, okay? And nobody will query them. Nobody will be like, hey, why are you eating on the road? That's bad manners. Or nobody will like give them one kind eye, okay? Because they are eating on the road. No. Or judge them because they are eating on the road, okay? So, and I'll be telling you guys another shock that I've witnessed living here in the UK. And that is, you guys, sexuality. I'm not judging anybody's... Uh, sexuality or personality okay this is where like it's a shocker if you're coming from nigeria you see that you will know that yeah there are people who are gay who are cross dressers who are lesbians and you know all of these uh, lgbt community people they we have them in nigeria but they are not like they are very proud like yeah they be like they get wings for here <laughs> see these people they have wings for here as in Goodness, the other day I was going to my son's school and I saw two ladies. That one just entered the car and they started kissing. I was like, hey, Jesus. It shocked me because this thing is not 
thing is not something that happens in the public in Nigeria. Okay, people who belong to this uh, LGBT uh, communities, they don't like show it openly. Even in my country, when they catch you doing all this kind of thing, they will, they will even embarrass you. People will embarrass you. People will like even burn you if police no come to rescue you. They understand? But yeah, hmm. nobody. They don't send anybody. They will, they will come and be doing their, you know, mechon ungeng. <laughs> They will come and be doing it to the public. I'll be like, hey. <laughs> so when I saw those two ladies, it was a shock. It was a shock. Are you guys cross dressers here? Hmm. We are even talking about uh, Lagos Mama. <laughs> I don't want to mention his name. <laughs> but yeah, grand people, as in old people, have actually witnessed old people. This one is an old man. He dressed himself like a lady, wore wigs, makeup. When I saw the man, I honestly went to a corner just to get a good, a better view of him when he was walking. Because he was walking majestically. He said, hey, <laughs> man. So here, when it comes to this LGBT community, nobody judge them, okay? They live their life to the fullest here, okay? And another shock at you guys. You see small children, hmm? Small, small children, no. Secondary school children doing boys and girls on the road. Like, they'll be holding hand on the road, be, you know, doing it. I'll be like, secondary school children. <laughs> if it's in my country, <laughs> secondary school children, you come and be doing boys and girls on the road with your boyfriend. Be doing kissing and be doing touch, touch up and down. As in, the other day, ah, oh God, this was totally strange for me. It was a shock, not even strange. It was a shock. The boy was... Pressing the girl's bones like in a public place. My goodness. And people were at the bus stop. And they were doing that, you know, the girl was like almost carried her boobs on the boy. And the boy. <laughs> goodness. It's funny now that I'm saying it, but it wasn't funny because I was. It's <laughs> School children, no. These are not like working. School children. And those children were like maybe maybe 15, 14, 15 years. And they were like pressing and touching and say, yay. And I was like, okay, let me mind my business and continue <laughs> from watching what I'm watching. <laughs> because they were more like entertaining my eye now. And nobody, you know, there were adults there who were also waiting for their boss. Nobody talk. I was like, okay, since nobody talk. Let me continue enjoying the show. <laughs> so yeah, nobody judge anybody when it comes to when it comes to sexuality, when it comes to people they love and all of that. No, no, no. People are actually free to do whatever they want. Okay. Another thing that is a shock to me, you guys, is their mode of dressing. You know, if you don't know how to mind your business, you can't live in this country. Honestly, I remember when we were in the uni, one of my lodge one of my roommates there was this clothes that she wore if you studied in other state university you know a core kiwi so she was in front i was you know behind her and the clothes she was wearing was so revealing so so revealing and you know this market women were like asha asha i won't see what you're wearing you would have naked yourself now you know so the girl was quite embarrassed because of people were like you know when you're walking in a market women will be like throwing you shades up and down. Yeah. Yeah, if you do that here, they will just call police for you. Honestly. Because, yeah, you remember the day naked. You see, code, they, there's code. And you see, they wear half coats. Some of them won't even wear bra. Like, <laughs> they'll be dangling their breasts up and down. <laughs> so, all these things are like, it's very strange to me. Very, very strange. People don't just go out like okay, don't they oh god dressing here is crazy, like crazy. You see people that wear bum shorts, maybe on a very good, you know, bright sunny day. You see people wear bum shorts for you know bum shorts now. For the bum short to bum shorts can't get oh god. You know, for that bum at the back, for just where the bum they the bum shorts will not get tia tia. And you'll be seeing the uh, bomb I guess. God. God, what is this? So the kind of dress, the kind of clothes people wear here is... Ah, 
you will just be looking at them and be like, eh? Because their mode of dressing here is so they, a lot of them dress reasonably, like responsibly. But you see all these young girls, all these school children, even secondary school children, you see their skirt uniform, very short. I'll be like, is this so the school allows this kind of short skirt? But I think I guess it's normal for them to wear that kind of thing. Okay. Well in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If your your school uniform can can be cannot even be close to your pants, but yeah, it's normal, okay. So yeah, the amount of dressing here, some people's dressing here is so what I would say uncultured, coming from where I'm coming from, okay. But yeah, I think it's normal, <laughs> it's normal, okay. So you guys, this will be the end of this video, okay. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a huge thumbs up. See you guys in my next one. Ciao.